Hey students, this is Mr. Ravenscroft, and I'd like to teach you how to match exponential functions and their graphs. If you're on IXL, it's topic X2 under Algebra 1 or shortcut 72J. 72J. All right, so to learn how to do this, first you must understand something. When we say graph, there's a word or a kind of a couple words that you could use to paraphrase what graph means, and this is for any level of math. Any level. Wow. What does this graphing mean? It really means, if you want to break it down, that you're going to shade the, starts with an S, solutions. Okay, so the question really is, what are the solutions? We'll put a question mark here. What are the solutions to any equation they give us? Whatever they are, we're going to find that if we're going to graph this equation, then we've got to find those points that are being shaded. So why don't we just go find some solutions? First off, what in the world the solution? Think about it this way. If I said, hey, what's the solution to this equation, x plus 2 equals 5, you'd probably say 3. And why are you saying 3? Well, think about it. 3 is a number that when you do what? Plug it in for x, right? It makes the equation true. It makes a true statement. It makes it balanced. So in any math situation, a solution is a number or numbers that make something true. Okay, so let's find some of those numbers. And these numbers are probably measuring something in real life. Okay, so let me clear our screen here. Let's find our first set of solutions. I'm noticing there's two variables, so we're going to have to plug in a number for x. And whatever number this side of the equation turns into when we plug in that number, that's what y would have had to equal to make it balanced. And so we'll have a, an x value and a y value that make a solution. That's the background. That's what empowers you uh, to not memorize things that don't make sense. You know, that's stressful and it just kind of disappears with time. Let's actually understand something. So that's why we're going through that. Let's, let's try an example. Here we go. Let's say we plugged in zero. So to plug in a number, we literally just write down what number we're plugging in. We recopy the equation. So y equals 2 times 1 third to the x. Okay, that's where x is. I'm just going to draw a little arrow and put an x here. Uh, minus 1. So why don't we plug in our x value and see what we get. So our x value here, use a little bit of purple, plug in where x is, we're going to plug in 0 and say, okay, what would this side of the equation turn into? First off, any, any number to the 0 power, we have to do our exponents first here, it's telling us how many we have of what's below, any number to the 0 power actually equals 1. Okay, so now I bring down what's left. We now have 2 times 1 minus 1. Looks like we get 2 minus 1, which is just going to equal 1. What does that mean? I think it means when you put a 0 in for x, this y value, in order to make everything balanced, would have had to have equaled 1 the whole time in order to keep things balanced. Let's write that down. The y value, the input was 0 when the output was 1, and those two were a pair. I know that... If I'm graphing this equation, it has to have that point, 0, 1. Sometimes it takes one point to figure out which of the four graphs is your correct graph, because if only one of the graphs has the right point, that has to be the one. We could test more points if we wanted to, but we may not need to. All right, 0, 1. I walk 0 on the x-axis. I go up 1 on the y-axis. Okay, I'm right here. This graph does not have that point shaded. It has 0, negative 3 shaded. Okay, so it's not this graph. Uh, how about this one, 0, 1? No, not shaded by the graph. It has this point shaded. Uh, uh, how about this one, 0, 1? Yes, this one does have it shaded. And so does this one. So now, if we don't know any of the patterns of exponential functions, we probably should just go ahead and plug in one more point. So let's plug in one more point. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and erase uh, the 0 erase our work here just a little bit, and we'll reuse some of this spot, figure out our next point. So let's say we plug in now. Uh, let's just go over one more. Let's plug in a 1. Okay, so plug in a 1. Here we go. So where we see x, we're going to put a 1 there. Let's work it out. What is y going to equal? 2 times, okay, 1 third to the 1 power. That's just saying you have 1 of the 1 thirds. That's just 1 third. Okay, 2 times 1 third, I'm going to take top times top, 2 times 1, and get a 2. 1 times 3 on the bottom, that's going to give me a 3. So now I have 2 thirds, 2 times 1 third became 2 thirds, 2 thirds minus 1. Uh, if you had 2 thirds of a dollar and someone said, no, you owe me a whole dollar. Well, I'll give you my 2 thirds of a dollar, but I guess I still owe you 
one third, right? You can convert one whole pizza into a pizza that's described as having three out of three slices. That's another way you can think of this as a denominator, one over one, and get common denominators. Two thirds minus one third. This is going to be negative one third. Woo! A little bit of fraction work there, but we got an output. When we plugged in a one, we got the output. The machine gave us a negative one third. So I wonder which graph has that point. Negative one third. Is it the one on the left or the one on the right? Let's see. Walk to one, go down, go up to one third. It does not have that point there. This one, walk to one, go down to negative one third. Sorry, that was a negative. It does have it. Check mark. All right, so this one did not work. It looks like this one down here is our answer. Um, let's go ahead, click that one, and look for another problem um, that also is a good one. Hey, students, in this example, you could plug in tons of points, but I would say if we're going to try to match an equation to one graph, which equation is it, we might want to strategically choose some points to plug in and say which equation is going to give us that point. Right? So I'm noticing one interesting thing. I love the point zero. Zero is very quick to plug in. If we plugged in a zero, look at what we should get. You see where their graph is shaded? There's a whole bunch of points on here that are shaded, right? We don't know where all of them are exactly are. We can estimate. But one that's very blaringly jumping out at us is zero. If you plug in a zero, you apparently get a zero. So which equation has that point is our good starting point. Some of these might be able to be eliminated. So which equation, if you plug in a zero, would give you a zero? Hmm. I notice they all have a plus three on the end. What do you add to a three to get a zero? It'd be negative three, wouldn't it? So this makes me kind of say, which one of these have something that's going to give me a negative three? That's just my own intuitive, intuitive way of solving these. If you don't like trying to guess and you know, educatedly guess which one's going to be best, you can always just go plug it in and see what happens. You'll start noticing patterns. So assuming that some of you guys might say, eh, I'm not so comfortable with the whole like trying to detect which one's the right one. I'm just going to show you the method that always works, which is to just start plugging it into the equation. So let's take our first one. Let's plug in our x value of 0, see what would happen. So we'd have for the first equation, y equals 3 times 1 half to the 0 plus 3. Okay, one half to the zero, anything to the zero becomes a one. So this is going to turn into three times one plus three. Okay, that's going to give us a six. Okay, so this equation has zero comma six. We plugged in a zero, we got a six. Er, that's not the point this graph has. Uh, let's try another one. This bottom one here, I'll use a new color so you can kind of follow which one's which. Let's try this one. Here we go, y equals, this is a good assignment to have a, decent amount of scrap paper beside you. Okay, let's plug in our x value of zero, see what we get here. All right. So anything to the zero power becomes a one. So we end up with negative three times one plus three. Hey, negative three times one is negative three, negative three plus three, that's zero. This equation actually does have the point 0, 0. So it's still good so far. I'm noticing this one down here. I'm going to do a little bit of my head now to save myself a little bit of time. If I plug in 0 to this one, can you imagine you're going to get 1, and 1 times 3 would be 3, 3 plus 3 would be 6. This one's not going to work either. This one up here, negative 3. I said I would use new colors. Let's go for it. Negative 3 times 2 to the 0 power plus 3. Once again, you'll see that pattern happening. Anything to the 0 power becomes a big 1. So this turns into negative 3 times 1 plus 3. Okay. There aren't many shortcuts on this topic if you're not going to kind of intuitively learn the patterns of exponential functions. Um, if you're just kind of guessing and checking and learning them, you just got to show out your work a little bit. So far, we have two options. I have them boxed up. These two did not work. These two still are working. What I need to do is clear the screen and go test out another point. Okay, so here we go. I'm going to say that these ones are knocked out of the contest. Let's find another point that would be nice to plug in. How about this one here? I don't know exactly where that's at. It looks like it's about somewhere between 1 and 2. 
Uh, I'll put 1.5 and then a question mark because I am estimating, okay? So it could be three halves, could be something like that. Which equation, uh, this one or this one, is going to give me something like that? Let's test it out. So let's plug in a 1 to those equations. I'll go ahead and choose this equation here. So y is equal to negative 3 times 2 to the x plus 3. All right, we're going to plug in a 1. So we get 2 times 1 is 2. Negative 3 times 2 is negative 6. All right, looks like we get about a negative 3. That doesn't sound right. We plugged in 1 and we got negative 3. Hmm. Ironically, they have a point negative 1 comma negative 3. But for us, if we write it down, uh, we needed the point 1 comma 1 and a half. So this one does not look like the right one. We're pretty sure it's this one. But and so that we know we're not going crazy, let's just test it and make sure we didn't make some mistake along the way. Negative 3 times 1 half to the 1. I can already see this is starting to work out. 1 half to the 1 is 1 half. 3 times 1 half, you can put it over 1, you'd get 3 over 2, which is 1 and a half. So you end up getting this right here turns into negative 3 over 2, which is negative 1.5 plus 3. And if those fight and cancel and give you 1.5, okay. We actually know this point does have the point 1 comma 1 and a half. So this would be our answer. A little bit more long process there to solve that, but uh, it definitely gets you there just plugging in those answers and testing those. Hey, that is the main method for this topic, uh, x2 matching exponential functions with their graphs. Why don't you guys give it a shot? Let me know how it goes. Hope it goes well, and uh, don't hesitate to reach out if you have any questions. All right, take care, everybody. Love you guys. Bye-bye.